Welcome to one of my favorite sections of all bonus materials, the deleted scenes. Um, oftentimes when we're making a film, we have these great little gems of scenes that ultimately just don't work in the film. Here are a few of our favorites. This scene is called Automatic Tail, and unlike the storyboarded deleted scenes, this one was actually carried into previs, and so it was really just this expansion on the idea that Hiccup was going to craft an automatic tail for his best friend Toothless so that he could pursue the Light Fury, and in doing so, we wanted to make it seem like it was a, a loving gesture, an act of freedom that he was bestowing to Toothless, and so we wanted to do it with care and take our time and kind of create the whole thing in slow motion. Ultimately, it's just, you know, it was dragging the pace down and we decided to kind of cut to the chase and just show Hiccup completing the tale as Astrid walks in. It was something that had a very nice artistic feel to it and I really loved the way it had come out. This next scene is called Protector versus Captor, and it was largely a discussion between Hiccup and Volca about their situation, about how to protect the dragons and whether it was right to do so versus letting them thrive in the wild, where they might be better adapted to protect themselves. Ultimately, Hiccup has a strong point of view about this. He's been gathering dragons and, and, and trying to protect them, but it's getting more and more difficult as their enemies encroach. So Volk is presenting a controversial and, and bothersome idea to Hiccup that he has to take on. Ultimately, we decided not to put it into the film because it was laying too much out there. It seemed like every other character knew what needed to happen long before Hiccup discovered it. And in order to, to let it feel more organic and to let it breathe thematically, we decided to just call it down to the essence. And you'll see a little bit of that reflected in the film. Here you are, bud. The ultimate dragon love nest. Storm doors to keep out the cold. Nice bed of coals to keep you both warm. And an ice box for midnight snacks. Oh, a little romantic ambiance. Ah, and of course, a view any dragon would devour for. Oh, what the? Ah, so. Think she'll like it? <laughs> Best of all, I'm right next door if you need me. I know, I know, he has to win her over, but I'm telling you, once she moves in, it will all be perfect. <laughs> Eris and I returned from the scout. Burke was burned to the ground. <sighs> At least everyone's safe. Mm -hmm. 
for now. No one can find us here. That's what I used to believe, Hiccup. But they've found our nest in the far north, too. Greedy humans, they'll always find a way. I don't believe that. I, I, I know it might be hard for you to accept, but the dream that you and I yearn for, you know, this untouchable dragon utopia, I fear it just doesn't exist. I mean, maybe, in the end, the dragons are safer in the wild. Wait, with crazy people like Grimmel around? The more dragons we bring back, the bigger of a target we all become. But they're safer with us. We protect them. And we'll continue to do so. But I fear for their safety in these large numbers. Tame dragons are more vulnerable to humans. Their trust in us becomes their weakness. In the wild, they're better adapted to protect themselves. <laughs> A chief protects his own. That's what Dad always said. And he was right. But as much as we love our dragons, Hiccup, they are not our own. There's a fine line between being a protector and a captor. Eret and I are heading off to track Grimmel. We'll report back with what we find. But in the meantime, I only ask that you think about it. This next deleted scene is called Spy Mission, and it was meant to be just a conversational scene between Astrid and Valka. We thought with Valka now kind of looming as almost the mother-in-law that there might be a closer connection between these two. And so it was Astrid venting a little bit about the idea of marriage and how quickly she shot it down, and Valka prying a little bit to find out where, where her mind is really at. It was just a nice scene. It was while they were flying out on a mission and just meant to be an introduction. But ultimately, we felt like it was maybe explaining away too much that we wanted to just let evolve organically on screen. It's not that I'm completely against it, but you know, it has to mean something. It's a big step. I mean, I'd, I'd never get married just to get married. Have you tried talking to him about it? Oh, gods, no. He would just turn it into a joke. Uh, what about you? <laughs> were, were you always... Sure about Stoic? Oh. Well, Stoic and I, we were very different. And he was grounded, you know, of the earth, whereas I was always mm, of the air. A little wild and unsettled. <laughs> I'm afraid Hiccup gets that from me. <laughs> <laughs> he sure does. I, I meant that in a good way. Yeah, we, we were both very stubborn. But somehow we brought out the best in each other. I see that in you two. You make each other better. Thanks. But, um, he's so focused on Toothless. He doesn't think he can do anything without him. And I'm not going to compete with a dragon, so... <laughs> I don't blame you. This next deleted scene is called Mind Before the Sword, and it was one of several other flashbacks that we had in the film between young Hiccup and Stoic. This one was actually meant to come after Gremmel had first attacked Hiccup's home and the, the, the village of Burke, and Hiccup was thinking about what to do before he laid out his plan to pursue a quest for the hidden world. Ultimately, in the pacing of the movie, it just didn't work because it, it, it felt like we were kind of dragging our feet instead of going right into the large group town hall scene where Hiccup lays out his plan. So, you think you can outsmart me, huh? You think you can stop the wrath of the mighty Gronko? <laughs> Your move. Ha! I got your Gronko, Daddy! <laughs> Left your leader exposed, so my nadder gets your chief. Run. But, but I love my chief. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's all right. You can have him back, son. 
But remember, always use the mind before the sword. Now this next deleted scene is called Your Responsibility. It was a second stoic flashback that was originally in the film and it's one of my favorites, really. Ultimately, we decided not to put it into the film because it was a little too on the nose, as we say. Hiccup is discovering in his own way uh, that he has to let Toothless go. And I think by having this scene kind of mirror that experience as a youth, it made the present seem almost redundant. And therefore, we cut it from the film. But it, it's, I thought it was a beautiful scene. Yeah! Ha! Ha! Ugh. 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 Did you see that, Dad? This one's a monstrous nightmare. Yeah! And this one's a deadly matter. Ugh. Not as deadly as me, though. Right, Dad? <laughs> Not nearly as monstrous, either. Woohoo! Yeah! Ha! <gasps> uh, what's wrong with him, Dad? <sighs> fell from its nest and broke its wing. Oh, very sad. But these things happen, son. The only right thing to do is to end its suffering. Head on down the path. No, Dad! No! Hiccup. Can't we help him? He's little like me. Can't we help him get better? Fetch me a twig. Okay. Here. Well, now hold them very carefully. Mm. It's your responsibility now, son. You must feed him and care for him until he's able to fly free and return to the wild. Dad. <laughs> 